wonder what's brung the two Cartwright boys to town. Old Nosy himself. But he can't ride in or out of town without your long nose starting to itch. Nothing wrong taking an interest in your neighbor. Uh, I always was one to keep to my own affairs. But old Jeb here, he's sort of been bit by the curiosity bug. He's wondering what brung you fellas to town. Well, I reckon I can tell you two fellas. Yeah. See them two horses down there? They brought us. <laughs> you just had to get nosy, didn't you? Come on, Joe. This paperwork's gonna take us an hour. Hey, wait a second. I don't see the stage coming. Uh, the idea of sitting in that musty old office all day kind of makes my stomach flutter, you know? Yeah, I know what makes your stomach flutter. I've seen her, too. Come on here. Hey, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, Pa said you were going to take care of all that paperwork and stuff. Well, you just hold down the fort. I'll be back in a minute. Uh, Ma'am, we, uh, we kind of pride ourselves on our hospitality here in Virginia City. That's why we always have a gentleman meet the young ladies at the stage. Oh, how nice. <laughs> Where is he? Uh, well, my dear, we'd best check into the hotel. Where is he? There they go. Uh, room? Yeah, my, uh, two rooms, as a matter of fact. Uh, one for myself and one for my niece. Uh, where's your sheriff generally hang out this time of day? Well, if you're avoiding him, stay off Main Street. If you're looking for him, his office is down the street apiece. Rooms 10 and 11. Hmm, can't exactly make out your name here. Uh, is it, uh... Cranston? Yeah, that's my name, all right. Uh, Homer T. Cranston. Reminds me of a refreshing breeze right off from the prairie. And you two remind me of a gale from the barn. Now, if you don't mind. If I didn't know better, I'd think he was trying to avoid us. Now, you wouldn't do that, would you? Not to two nice fellows like us. <laughs> now, listen, you two back pasture Romeos. Out of my way. Can't a lady walk in this town without being bothered by two low-down, miserable, fat-brained, lop-eared cows? Lop-eared? Yeah, it's lop-eared. You want to play games, right? Oh, I'll play games. Oh, you can't. Well, I'll make up the rules. Oh, 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 Thank <laughs> you. 
Captain, ma'am. Uh, Miss uh, Flinch. But, but you can call me Jennifer, oh. Mr. Uh... Well, thank you, ma'am. My, my name's Cartwright, but you can just call me Hoss. Hoss? <laughs> I like that. Do you? And it's easy to see why you named that, because... Uh, because you're stronger than a whole team of Percherons at sunup. <laughs> yes, sir, you got muscles stronger than a mule. Oh. While you're at it, Hoss, why don't you show your teeth? Uh, allow me to present myself again, Miss Joe Cartwright, at your service. Cartwright? Well, that's your name. I, a sad but true, uh, blood is thicker than water. He's my older brother. Much older. Now, look here, Joe. And that disgraceful incident I just witnessed. Street brawling. Street brawling? Joe, them two liquored up bums is trying to bother Miss... Miss Jennifer. Now you stop teasing your brother, Joseph. It was just wonderful the way he came to my rescue. Why, well, he's the strongest man I've ever met. Well, well, now that you've seen his talents, how would you like to see a little more refined part of Virginia City, say, uh, luncheon at Garson's restaurant? Sure. Why, well, I'm hungry than a parcel of pokes for a spring thaw. Uh, I mean, I would be delighted to have luncheon with you. If, uh, Hoss. We'll accompany us. Oh, Ma'am, I'd, I'd be happy to. Now, uh, Hoss, did you get all that paperwork finished? Dad, burn it. I gotta get that done, too. Maybe I'll join you later, ma'am. Please do. Yes, ma'am. And uh, don't you hurry now, Hoss. Because uh, haste makes waste. Thank you again. Yes, ma'am. Hey, let, let me tell you about the ranch, I run. We, we call it the Ponderosa. How's it going, Rocky? Not too good, little Joe. Somebody go stiff me up something awful. I can't ride no more. I, uh, was sort of wondering if, uh, well, uh... Sure. There you go, Rocky. Bless you, lad. Howdy. And you run the Ponderosa all by yourself. Well, of course, Horace helped me with a few routine matters. Of course, then there's Pa and Adam. That's my older brother. Hey, they have a few minor chores to take care of, but I, I do take most of the burden myself. Hey, well, that's enough about me. What, what brings you to Virginia City? Well, I came with my Uncle Gideon. He's in the investment business over to Placerville. He had some sort of a deal here, so I twisted his arm to take me along. <laughs> hey, they got sauerkraut and hog knuckles. Morning. Sorry. Thank you. Wow, that faded pop the corset stays on a school arm. <laughs> oh, I, I, I mean the. The luncheon was delightful. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed the cuisine. No, I, I had the hog knuckles. Oh. Hey, uh, look. Why don't we, uh, why don't we get down the livery stable? I'll rent a buggy, go for a little ride, and I'll show you the countryside. Ah, uh, well, that would be very nice, but uh, don't you think we better wait here for Hoss? Oh, no, no, I, I think he's gonna be tied up for a long time. Oh, oh. So I'll just pay the check, and we'll be on our way. <laughs> What's the matter? My wallet's gone. It's funny, I had it went outside when I gave Rocky that money. I was careful to put it back in my pocket. I haven't been close to anybody. Except you, Jennifer, honey. That was a pretty funny joke. You had me worried for a minute. Let me have it back so I can pay the check. I didn't take your old wallet. Well, look, a joke's a joke. Come on, give me it back. Let me tell you something, Mr. Cartwheel. Cartwright. I am not the kind of a girl that goes around lifting men's wallets, even for a joke. But if you didn't do it for a joke, you must have done it for real. And if you don't give it back, I'm going to take it back. You call yourself a gentleman. Why, you mealy mouth, ever headed mangy renegade cousin to a second low boat! Ah! All right, that's about enough. All right, Miss Pocket Picking Flinch, I'm taking you to the sheriff. Oh, no, you're not! Oh, oh, yes, I am. Hi, Granny. Looky there. And you want to sit down to the general store at the other end of the street. <laughs> There's been more doing here this morning than I see in three weeks at the animal. <laughs> Oh, 
getting big enough to attract all kinds of riffraff and sneak things. Whoa! Don't, don't let this creep. Space fool you, sir. She's nothing but a sneaking pickpocket. You search her, she's got my wallet. Wallet? What this this jackal says is a dirty lie, Sheriff. I never touched his moth eating no wallet. And if you touch me, I'll scratch your eyes out. Now you simmer down, the both of you. Little Joe, I've known you a long time. And if you say that this little lady stole your pocketbook, then I got to believe that you think you're telling the truth. On the other hand, while she's a total stranger, she don't have the look of no pickpocket. Spunky, yeah, but I went some looking, little thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and that's all part of her bait, Sheriff. Yeah, to, to, to gull an innocent man like myself and, and to let my guard down so she can stick her hands in my pockets. Now, you search her. She's got my wallet on her. You just go ahead and try, Sheriff, and you'll end up with a mouth full of Sheriff's badge. We've got to start being more careful, Sheriff Coffey. This town's beginning to get all kind of riffraff and sneak thieves. I caught this here hombre red-handed. As a matter of fact, I caught him with his hand in my pocket. Low-down pickpocket. Here, I found these on him. Had a busy morning. Wait a minute. Come on. I wouldn't want to touch the ugly old thing, Sheriff, but uh, if I'm not mistaken, that wallet belongs to Mr. Cartwheel. Cartwright. Um, Miss, Miss Jennifer, I, uh, I, I don't know what to say. You bet your sweet life you don't know what to say. You've said enough already. May I go now, Sheriff? You may. That is for the hog knuckles and sauerkraut. Good day, Sheriff. I'm sorry to interrupt, but my name, sir, is Gideon Flinch. Now, I take it that you're the sheriff? I am. Oh, excuse me. Roy Coffey's a name. Is there something I can do for you? Uh, why, yes. Uh, may I speak with you privately, sheriff? Yeah, uh, excuse me, boys. Uh, you see, sheriff, now I'm being pursued by a madman. Here, uh, just you read this. Yeah. It didn't finish General Liberty, Placeville, California. I'll meet you in the brain. It's this. I will break every bone in your body, oh. horsewhip you, oh. and then shoot you. Oh. Signed by uh, Mr. Burke. Now, who's he? Yeah, uh, William Burke. Uh, they call him Bullethead Burke. Bullethead Burke. Yeah, you, you see, I run a small investment house over in Placerville, Sheriff. Now, this Burke entrusted me with $5,000 for speculative investment. Well, naturally, I do the best I can for my clients, but I can't be right all the time. Well, of course not. And this $5,000 of Mr. Burke's, that's been wiped out? Unfortunately, yes. A except for my commission, of course. Well, yeah, of course, a man can't lose his own commission. Uh, well, somehow this Burke got the idea that I cheated him. Now, where in the world did he ever get that idea? Oh, well, you've got to help me. He might be riding into Virginia City right this minute. Now, you just calm down and give me his description, and I'll keep an eye peeled for him. I can't describe him. He did all his business with me by mail. Uh, but I've heard he's big, strong, and mean. Now, if you can't describe him, there ain't nothing I can do for you. Oh. Say, friend. Uh... Me? Kind of light. Well, uh... Well, where's your smoke? Well, I figure if you don't mind lighting me, you wouldn't mind supplying the stogie. <laughs> Oh, uh, they stole the... Uh, May I have my key, please? Good afternoon, Miss Cranston. Uh, hello. Uh, 
I I'm afraid you've got my name mixed up. It isn't Cranston, it's Flinch. Flinch? I, I don't think I understand. Your uncle registered you in as Miss Hepzibah Cranston. Hepzibah? Let me see that. Hepzibah, indeed! Hepzibah. Oh! Really, Uncle Gideon? Uh, I thought it was kind of a nice name. Do I look like a Hepzibah? Well, I'm not going to look like your Uncle Gideon if Bullethead Burke catches up with me, which he'll probably do now that you made the clerk put my right name down on the hotel register. Well, I didn't know, Uncle. I thought you were here on business, not running away from a man. Well, I didn't want you to worry, my dear. But the die is cast. I, I'm trapped and no way out. Oh, maybe you're just imagining it. Maybe he isn't chasing you at all. Well, I didn't conjure this up. No, sir. You just take a look at that. Oh, if I were only young and strong, I'd stand up to this Burke and whip him. Of course you would. But I'm not young and strong. Uncle. Do you remember on the stage this morning we passed that old deserted cabin about three miles from here? Well, now, I noticed a shack by the river. That's the one. Now, look, you sneak out the back way, I'll buy some grub and rent a buggy and take you out there. No, no, it won't work. Burke would just find out I've been here and track me down like a dog. But, but I thought you said he'd never seen you. Well, that won't stop him. Uh, no, Jennifer, I've heard stories about this, Burke. Well, I understand he can lick any two ordinary men. And... And I'm not even ordinary. That's it! What's it? I'm not gonna have my favorite uncle get beaten up. You are gonna hide out in that cabin. Only Burke, when he gets here, isn't going to come looking for you because he's going to find somebody here whom he'll think is you. But I don't understand. I mean, you can't find someone who's willing to take my place and get beaten up. To get beaten up? No. <laughs> to take your place? Yes. If I can trick him into it. And I think I can. Hi, Rocky. Did you lose your smoke? Yeah, not only that, lumbago stiffen me up something terrible. I can't ride no more. Also, I kind of hate to do this, but, uh, well, uh... Here, here, Rocky. Thank you. Don't miss me. Thank you. Well, I still don't like this idea, not one bit. Oh, well, it's better than being horsewhipped and beaten and every bone busted in your body. Now, I've got a little plan worked out. And unless I'm losing my touch... Come on, horse! over the way that you handled those two men that were bothering me this morning. Oh, they is, they is kind of puny, Miss Jenny. Anyhow, they need to bet. <laughs> uh, I'll just bet that there aren't two men anywhere could take you. Oh, sure there is, Miss Jenny. Somewhere. No, no, Hoss. You're the kind of a man that a girl feels safe with. You know, that a, that a girl can depend on. Oh, yeah, you can depend on me, Miss Jenny. Anything you want, you just ask me, you hear? Oh, 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 no, no, Hoss. You, you've done more than enough, more than enough. Uh, uh, of course, there is one small favor that I'd like to ask of you. Why, sure, ma'am. Well, you know, my Uncle Gideon has been uh, tired and exhausted from the trip and all. He doesn't feel up to uh, showing an out-of-town client a good time. So, so I, I was just wondering if you... Uh, uh, Miss Jenny, I... I ain't much at good timing with a stranger. I... Oh, 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 Hoss, you'd be wonderful. A and there's no problem, because this client, Mr. Burke, he's a, he's never seen my uncle. Uh, Miss Jenny, I, I don't know. I... Oh, it's simple, Hoss. 
All this Mr. Burke will want is maybe a, a free dinner and a few drinks. Why, I have a hunch that after he sees you, he'll only stay for a minute or two. That burn, Miss Jenny, them, them big business deals, I'm, I'm about as clumsy as a one-legged spider. But, you know, if you, if you really want me to, I... Oh, Hoss, I, I really want you to. <laughs> Okay. Now, 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 let me get this straight, Hoss. Now, Jennifer wants you to just play act the part of her uncle. So, uh, have a little talk with this Mr. Burke, maybe buy him a drink. That's or... right. I'm on my way up there right now, Joe, to meet him. The fact is, since I'm going to be here all evening, there ain't no use in you hanging around. You might as well just ride on back out the wreck. No, no, I, I better stay with you, Hoss. Maybe give you some help. Oh, no, you don't. The fact is, Joe, you done had your chance, Jennifer. Now, you ride on back out the Ponderosa and tell Paul I ain't going to be there for something. Bye, little brother. <laughs> I do if you're Miss Flinch. I am. Well, this here fellow from the stage office gave me a nickel to ask you to come down there right away, please. Said there was some sort of mix-up with your ticket. Honest to Pete, these, these ticket offices. All right. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Boy. I come as fast as I could. It's the Ponderosa. Keep in trouble. You gotta go. What sort of trouble, boy? Fire. It's burning like a can of coal oil. Here. You tell this lady in here what happened to you. Here's that the nickel I promised you. Nickel? What are you, some kind of a crook or something? What you wins a game, he gets another week off. What'd you make that move for? What did I make the move? You told me to make the move. You're so smart. You go ahead, you play yourself. Go on. All right, I will. Come on, set him up. You're gonna lose me so many games, this fellow's gonna get out of here and I won't have nobody to play with but you. I'll show you how this game should be played. Yeah. I suppose you invented it. Over here. Come on, one more. All right, now, what's to choose? Clark, he's faster than you are with them handcuffs on. All right, you go first. Oh. Don't touch us. Well, it's awful nice you fellas come all the way in Chicago just to help me out. <laughs> the boss said there's nothing too good for Bullethead Burke. Do you really think the pigeon's here, Bullethead? Well, there hadn't been a stage out of town since he arrived. And this is the only hotel. Boy, I've been looking forward to this for a long, long time. Now, you fellows go in the alley and back. 
just in case Mr. Flinch tries to make a break for it out the back way. Now, easy and quiet. Don't cause no commotion. Bullethead, do you think this is the first time we pulled an out-of-town job? Sorry, boys. Forgot where you were from. Shoes. Over here. Today. You already lost me seven games. You there? That's why you're a deputy. Come on, I'll let you out. Doggone you, ear flea bit and biscuit binders. surprise. What have you done with Hoss? What are you doing here? You, you... No, 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 no names, Jennifer. Now, you call me enough names to last me for a whole year. I just wanted an opportunity to tell you how dead wrong I was. Well, you'll be plain dead if you don't get out of here. Oh, well, don't, don't stand that draft. I'll bet that you had something to do with sending me on that wild goose chase to the stage office, too. Well, sort of. Yeah. Oh, and I sent Hoss back to the Ponderosa. Oh, no! Oh, well, honey, look, all's fair in love and war. Ah, this isn't exactly war, is it? Oh, oh, come on, don't be like that. I'll be like what I want to be like. Uh, excuse me. Yes? I'm looking for a man. I can't describe him, but he goes by the name of Gideon Flinch. Of course, room 10. You mean he's here, using his own name? Now, when he checked in, he called himself Homer T. Cranston. I may look pretty stupid, but not much slips by me. Yeah, uh, room 10, huh? Thanks. Now, look, you wanted Hoss to be Gideon Flinch, so now I'll be Gideon Flinch. You can't be Gideon Flinch. Why can't I? You know, look, I, I know Hoss has got the muscles and the brawn, but uh, I just feel that I have the ability to make a much better impression on Mr. Burke. That might be Mr. Burke. <laughs> no. Oh, Jennifer, will you stop worrying? Look, I just want a chance to show you I'm sorry, that's all. Now, I'll be the best little old Gideon Flint you ever saw. Now, I promise. I'll make a good impression on Mr. Burke if it kills me. You Gideon Flinch. Oh, yes, you must be Mr. Burke. Very nice to meet you. So you're the one that cheated me out of my $5,000, huh? You know, I kind of thought you'd be an older man, but I'm glad you're not. I'd hate to beat up on an old man. <gasps> well, Bullethead was right. The little pigeon did try to sneak out the back way. Yeah, you're gonna go along quietly, Flint? <laughs> Flint? Oh, you made a mistake, a terrible mistake. My name is Jake, Jake the Weasel. Come on, don't give us that. Jake the Weasel's doing time in Detroit. Oh, th that must be another Jake the Weasel. You say you're Jake the Weasel, we say you're Gideon Flinch. You calling his liars? Let's just oh, take a look here and see what we can find. The... Well, now, this wallet's got all kinds of cards with the name Gideon Flinch. This watch, there's a name engraved on it. Gideon Flinch. I, I found it, but my name's Jake, Jake the Weasel. No. <laughs> you know, you're, you're lying to us and you're hurt our feelings. You know, we're sort of sensitive about that. You know, we may even end up massaging your throat. Like I said, Flinch, nobody cheats Bullethead Burke out of $5,000 and gets away with it. 
Oh, but I'm not going to work you over here. Me and my boys are going to take you for a little ride out in the country and do the job real proper-like. You see, Mr. Burke, there's, there's, there's been a nasty mistake. Oh, you're so right. And you made it when you cheated me out of my money. Now, no, no, hold it, Mr. Burke. Now, I, I didn't cheat you out of... I, I didn't cheat you out of anything. See, the fact, fact of the matter is I, I, I'm not even Gideon Flinch. <laughs> sure, sure. You're in Flinch's hotel room. And you try the old oil on me just as big as brass. Well, it won't work, Flinch. Uh, uh, Jennifer, you... You own up and, and tell, tell Mr. Burke here who I really am. Yeah, you do that, honey. You taught me never to tell a lie, Uncle Gideon. Uncle Gideon. Oh, you know, look, this is, this is just a plan she's got to protect her uncle. Now, I, I, never, I never cheated you out of anything. See, the, the fact is, my name is Cartwright, Joe Cartwright. You got something on you to prove? You're this here, uh, what do you call it, cartwheel? C -c -c Cartwright, C -c Cartwright. Oh, sure, sure, I got, well, I got a lot of proof. I got a... See, I, I, I had the, the proof, and I, I left my wallet in the sheriff's office. Of course you did. Everybody leaves their wallets with the sheriff. <laughs> now, Mr. Gideon Flinch, unless you want to test my shooting at five feet, you better stand real quiet while I tie up the little lady here. We don't want her running after the law after we gone now, do we? Oh. Oh. Je Jennifer, will you please tell Mr. Burke who I really am? Wonder what's keeping Burke. He must know by now the pigeon ain't in the hotel. We've got him. But, but, but fellas, I tell you, I'm Jake the Weasel. Are you boys down there? Yeah, Bullethead, we're here. Good, now stand by. I'm coming down the ladder. And I'm bringing this no good, low down skunk of a Gideon Flinch with me. You've got him. Then who have we got? Like I've been telling you, fellas, my name's Jake the Weasel. Paul, how come you ain't out fighting the fire? Hmm? What fire? The only thing burning around here is Pa. Beat him three games straight. Paul, you, you didn't send a little boy in about, about that high to get me. You've been out in the sun too long. I have warned him about you and that loco weed. That dead burn little Joe, I should have known it. I'm going to kill him. Hmm? Paul, it's like this. This pretty little gal came into town on the stage today, and little Joe took her to lunch, only, only she picked his pocket. The, the fact is, he, he just thought she picked his pocket. She wanted me to be Gideon Flinch because her uncle wasn't feeling too good. He was there in town, and he didn't feel like meeting Mr. I'll explain it all later, Paul. I'm going to kill that little Joe. <laughs> Maybe we better find out what it Yeah, it's your move. Okay, hold it up right here. Come on, boys, this is the end of the ride. This thing don't drive like the ones we use in Chicago. Well, we gotta decide which one of these two hombres is the real Gideon Flint. Oh, I keep telling you, I'm Jake the Weasel. Shut up! One thing's for sure. Why don't you use lying? Well, Mr. Burke, why don't you just ask somebody who lives around here and they'll tell you who I am. Got an idea, Bullethead. Why don't we take care of the both of them? <laughs> That's right. Uh, the boss said nothing's too good for you, Bullethead. Well, I appreciate that, fellas, but Bullethead Burke's a fair man. There's a cabin up ahead there. We'll ask one of the local yokels if he can identify one of you and not the other. Come on. Mr. Jennifer, 
Go do this to you. I did what I did. No. Oh. Oh. No. No, Hoss. It, it was Burke. I, I lied to you, Hoss. Burke came here to beat up my Uncle Gideon. I thought that after he saw you, he wouldn't make any trouble. But then little Joe took your place. And, and now Burke's taking little Joe out to beat him up somewhere. He, he thinks little Joe is my Uncle Gideon. Jennifer, you was here all the time. How come you didn't tell Burke Joe wasn't your uncle? Shane Hoss, but I was afraid he'd really find my uncle, and I was so mad at little Joe for calling me a pickpocket and... Well, hurry, that's all right. Now, everything's all right, honey. What's done's done. What we got to do now is find little Joe. And quick, well, look at this letter. You see what? Buck is really mad. Look at that. That bird. Must be a half a dozen roads out of Virginia City. I'm going to go down on the street and scout around and see if I can find anybody that saw him leaving. Okay. Oh, and, and I'm going to random buggy and go out and check out my Uncle Gideon. Thank goodness he's safe. Hey, that... Shut up! Oh, howdy, neighbor. I take it you're a native of these parts. Uh, why, uh, yes. Oh, good. Uh, maybe you can help me solve a little problem. Oh, let me introduce myself. My name's Burke. Some folks call me Bullethead Burke. And I'm a stranger in these parts myself. And I need someone to identify one of the local boys for me, Mr. Uh... That's the real Gideon Flinch. I tell you, Burke, that's Gideon Flinch. I've seen him in the sheriff's office and on the stagecoach. Why don't you shut up? You'll try anything, won't you? Now, what did you say your name was, sir? I, uh, uh, Cranston. Yeah, uh, Homer T. Cranston. Mr. Cranston? That's the name the hotel clerk told me that Flinch used. Uh, that, that's right, Bullethead. This is the man I saw get off the stage this morning. Now we've got three Gideon Flinches to take care of. What difference does it make? One, two, three. The boss said there's nothing too good for Bullethead. All right. Now all you Flinches get into that cabin. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Now. This much I know. One of you cheated me out of $5,000. Now, once and for all, which of you is the real Gideon Flinch? I'm Jake the Weasel. And I, I, I'm, I'm Joe Cartwright. C C Cranston? H Homer T? Somebody coming out there, Bullethead. Well, see who it is. I guess we all know who that is. So you managed to get yourself untied and follow us, huh? All right, it's just enough for the last time. Which one of these galoots is your uncle? It's going to be that way, is it? All right. Now, I'm going to give you people just three minutes to produce the real Gideon Flinch. Me and my boys will step outside while you talk it over. Now, remember, just three minutes. I ain't fooling. Either one of you gets beat up, horse whipped, and maybe shot, or all three of you. Now, is that clear? I can't let you two take punishment for me. I ought to own up to Bullethead. But I can't. Mm. Oh, that's all right, Uncle Gideon. We'll think of something. Say, how did you all get out here, anyhow? Um, how did we get out here? How did you get out here? How do you think? Hoss came back and untied me. The horse knows about this? Yes, I, I told him the truth. I even gave him that letter that Burke wrote to Uncle Gideon. You gave my brother the letter? Yes. And then he must have it on him. You know, I think maybe we can all get out of this. I'm, I'm willing. Oh, anything. Well, this is going to be good. Hmm. You see, if my brother's got the letter. Time's just about up, Bulletin. Where'd you get the watch? Oh, this is Flinch's. I figured when you got through with him, he wouldn't be needing it. So you're the real Gideon Flinch. I knew it. No, 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 no. Hold it, Burke. 
No, we, we, we decided to tell the truth. I'll give you ten seconds. Well, we... See, we, we think this farce has gone on far enough, and, well, the th three of us decided not to take a beating just to protect the real Gideon Flinch. You mean there's another Gideon Flinch? Four. Four Gideon Flinches. Four Gideon Flinches? Yes, see, see that, that was part of the plan. <laughs> see, we, we wanted to protect our, our old pal Gideon Flinch, one wonderful guy. And uh, we thought maybe we'd confuse you, and then you'd leave town. What kind of flummer are you trying to hand me? And, uh, now, you listen, Burke. Now, I can lead you to the real McCoy. I mean, I mean Flinch. And, and, he's, and he's right back there in town. And, and I can prove it. he's got a letter on him that you wrote to him. Now, am I right or am I right? The U.S. mail does not deliver letters to the wrong people. If this is a trick, I'm going to have you hide, Flinch, or not. Hey, Rocky, you ain't seen the Mateo, have you? Gosh, Hoss, I ain't seen him since this morning. But Mullen Bay goes yeah, killing yeah, me. Yeah, 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 I know, Rocky. Hey, you didn't see my pipe, did you? There goes one of them. Yeah. I wonder where's the other one. There he is. One and only Gideon Flinch. Boys, bring him in. Him. If that's really him, Bullethead, looks like you're going to have your hands full. Well, the bigger they are. Besides, you always got the bulge on a man when he knows that you're right and he's wrong. And if you got him outnumbered, oh, you better be right about him having my letter in his pocket. Oh, yeah, he's got it. You come with me. Put that thing away. Here. Keep your eye on him. Stranger. Oh, hi. Flinch. It's the real Gideon Flinch I got you at last. I take it that you're Mr. Bullethead Burke. Now, just so they ain't no mistaking, my name is Horse Cartwright, and you got my little brother, Little Joe. You're Gideon Flinch. <laughs> Flinch, that punch didn't hurt you no more than that. Ain't no needing us fighting. Ah, oh, good work, brother. Oh, Hoss, you were magnificent. Please, tell me, which one of you is Gideon Flinch? Confusing, ain't it? <laughs> I guess I owe you two a great deal of thanks. Uh, shouldn't we get the sheriff now? It's going to be kind of hard to do. See, the sheriff and the deputy rode out of town this morning looking for a little sneak thief that busted out of their jail named Jake the Weasel. That's me. I keep telling you, I'm Jake the Weasel. I guess he really was Jake the Weasel. I, I want to go back to Chicago. Please, I just got to know, which one of you is Gideon Flinch? Bullethead. This here is the only Gideon Flinch there is or there ever was. Well, don't let him hurt me. Oh, don't worry, none. He ain't gonna hurt nobody. Well, if you're willing to let bygones be bygones... No, you take my word for it. I don't ever want to see any of you ever again. Hey, uh, now that all the excitement's over and seeing that Garson's is still open, how would you like to have a little late supper with the more charming of the Cartwright clan? Why, well, I'd like that a whole lot. <laughs> if the more charming member would consider taking me... Oh, yes, 
yes, sirree. It's been a mighty tiring day. I'm plumb tuckered out. <laughs> Me too. This sure has been more exciting than the Alamo. Well, 